Hey guys, I want to talk about uh, about hand scraping today. So, you're looking at a, my granite surface plate, and these are the tools that I use for hand scraping, or at least most of the tools. So these are the scrapers that I that I use for pretty much everything, and uh, this is a Sandvik, I believe, 20 millimeter wide, and this is a 30 millimeter. So I think the most common one is the 25, and uh, that's the one that I don't have. But uh, this little guy, it's it's really nice for scraping dovetails or any kind of detail where you need to get uh, in somewhere tight. Uh, this one, the, the 30, I don't use that too much. Uh, if you want to do hand flaking or something, it, it's pretty good. You can see where I've been beating on it. Then these ones here, I've shown these on Practical Machinist, but uh, uh, all they are is uh, got a Delrin handle. These are just copper pipe fittings, piece of oak dowel rod, and then this is some I think three quarter conduit EMT. Just smashed it down. Then I used some of these binding screws to hold the hold the blade in. So my thinking was that I could just make different styles of blades and then change them out but in reality I pretty much just leave them set up all the time so this one is uh, I don't know what radius but a pretty pretty large radius and it's also the longest one so that's for roughing and uh, you can really lean on that one and then this one basically exactly the same except uh, it's a little bit shorter and it has a smaller radius so this will be good to get you down to like I don't know 20 points or something like that if you want to go any finer you got to have a smaller radius and probably also a narrower blade and this is my straight edge that's made by bush it's cast iron uh, 36 inches long I think it's an inch and a half wide so uh, this one I like because it is parallel so I can I can set it up on top of a dovetail way or whatever and indicate something on the other side or uh, you know it's a little more versatile than the camelback style and the power scrapers I haven't really gotten to use very much I just got uh, I just bought this Bi-X scraper um, or I guess most Americans pronounce it Bi-X but it's a it's a Swiss or German company so I would assume that they would pronounce it Bi-X anyway uh, this is the old blue style so I think from what I've read that that would uh, date it to sometime in the pre-1975 ish uh, it's got a Bosch motor and uh, it's been really well taken care of and these are the blades for the the Biax scraper I got a nice selection of long and short blades and then this thing here is a rinse scraper uh, also made in Germany and you don't see these very often in, in these states I actually bought this one from Canada came up on eBay and uh, it was all taken apart and it's really in bad shape I got it put back together and it is functioning but uh, the motor is just absolutely shot if you don't put it back together just right the rotor actually uh, rubs on the on the stator inside the the motor housing and it'll overheat and all kinds of bad things and then the gear train is okay but the cam there's like a swash plate cam in there that actually runs the or strokes the scraper and that thing's all worn out too so and plus it's a fixed speed and a fixed stroke so it's not that versatile and I'll probably end up selling it but I just bought it because it was interesting and I wanted to see what it was all about uh, it doesn't seem to be nearly as nice as the Biax scraper and then these are the layout uh, different layout dies that I use so that's Canode blue and can't read that one anymore but it used to say red this stuff here is a homebrew and this is what most of the scrapers that I know, the professional scrapers that I know use some variety of this and what this is it's basically uh, just this pigment powder so you can actually buy it from any like brick supply house uh, if you have one they use it for dyeing mortar and dyeing uh, concrete uh, for decorative purposes but it works really well as a layout medium and I just take the powder 
and put it into a can and then I mix it with oil any kind of oil I think I used SAE 40 uh, just regular machine oil uh, spindle lube would work whey lube would probably work fine uh, and I just mix it to it until it's kind of a paste I don't know sort of like toothpaste and that works out really well that's probably what we're going to use for scraping today uh, the canode so the canode is water based and that's the good part about it because your hands are going to be clean see I've been messing around with that black stuff and my hands are all stained so it's easy to clean up that's the good thing about canode but the problem with it being water based is it has all kinds of side effects you know you don't get anything for nothing and the problem I have with it is that number one it dries out in the bottle so you have to keep thinning it out and I just thin it by adding water to it and you know it'll actually get to where it won't come out the nozzle and you can't spread it doesn't want to cooperate or when you're spreading it out like with a rag it'll tack up really bad and it'll it'll take uh, yeah it just won't lay out smoothly so you gotta thin it out and then the other problem too is that I think because it's water based is that it likes to transfer from one color to the other so like if you have the blue on your straight edge or on your granite plate and you're using the red as a kinda like a highlighter on whatever part you're you're scraping it won't take very long before your blue starts to look purple and it'll just keep getting worse and worse until you have to wipe off everything on your master and start over with with fresh blue and this uh, homemade stuff doesn't do that I don't know why the cano does that but it, yeah it's really a pain in the butt and the other problem too is because it's water based you absolutely cannot leave it on a piece of cast iron because it'll it'll cause discoloration and if you leave it long enough it'll cause it to rust so at the end of the day you have to make sure you clean the canode off of your straight edge or whatever you're using because yeah it'll just it'll just rust it instantly this stuff over here obviously is oil based and you don't have that problem so the last thing you need is a stone or in this case a selection of stones so I don't even know what these stones are uh, that's a combination stone. It's got a coarse side and a fine side. And you really just need the fine side. There's no coarse stoning involved in, in scraping. And then this uh, bottle here, I think right now it has WD-40 in it, which is fine. It's mostly kerosene based. Mineral spirits works well too. You just need something to clean up the layout medium and to kind of lubricate your stone so you don't get it loaded up too bad. And then if you're scraping dovetails, these knife edge stones are really handy. You can really uh, reach into a sharp corner. Okay, I'm just going to lay out some black on my plate and uh, we'll take a we'll take a rub on this surface plate that I'm messing or this angle plate that I'm messing with. Looks like I was scraping on it once before, but I have no idea where it's at. So we'll we'll kind of start over. And uh, by the way, if you're uh, if you're squeamish about discoloring your surface plate, don't use the don't use the oil-based pigment that I use. It'll stain it pretty good, and just like dye chem will, there's nothing you can do about it. Eventually, the sunlight will bleach all the you know the UV rays would bleach out all the pigment, but it takes a while, and it doesn't matter to me. I mean, the surface plate's here to be used, but I was doing some scraping at a customer's shop one time, and I put some uh, die chem layout blue on their surface plate and they just had an absolute fit about it and uh, it's a pink surface plate had a nice big permanent blue spot on it and they didn't think much of that so you know gotta be careful about things like that Alright, so the other problem too with this black uh, ink 
is that it's really hard to tell how thick it's on. You know, with the, the can or whatever, you can, it's kind of translucent. You can see the plate through the die, but with this black stuff, you really can't. So the only way to tell if you have enough or too much is to take a rub and kind of interpret the results. All right, I'll put some red on the plate. Okay, that's what we want. We want it to be tinted red, but you still want to be able to see through the red. It's not it's not a paint job. It's just going to be a highlight. All right, here's the first print we've taken, and you can see there must be a big high spot here, and kind of a big high spot here, and a big couple of little small high spots there. So it's like it's way out. Who knows? Um, the only thing I'll say is that it's kind of hard to to do a transfer on a angle plate because this end is so much heavier than that end so it wants to bear much more on the heavier end so you kinda have to be careful how you interpret the transfer of the you know from the plate alright change of plans I had to move over to the welding bench it's just too shaky over there problem over here is the lighting isn't as good. Okay, it's probably good for the first round. We'll take another another print and take a closer look. So, this is my technique. It's the way I like to do it. Um, the biggest thing I see, like videos of people scraping, is you know they're out here with their hands and they're just kind of scraping like this. And that's fine, but. If you really want to make some progress, you got to lean on it and really take a big bite. So let's take another rub and see what we have. Okay, this is the second print, and you can see it's already starting to come in here and up here. So it must just be a low spot in this area. So the idea with scraping is we're not chasing the black spots, we're chasing the regions that have black color in them and we want to scrape the entire region that has black color in it down so that these areas that don't have the black color will start to come in. So when, when you start point scraping, you know, finish scraping, that's when you can chase the, chase the black marks. But right now we're, we're scraping regions. So, and also, <laughs> this isn't a good thing to start with, like a beginner project, because these webs right here Anytime you have to start on an edge with the scraper, it makes it really challenging. So one thing you can do to kind of cheat uh, when you're roughing is just make your rough passes more parallel to the features that are interrupting the surface. You know, you don't have to scrape exactly 45 degrees. If you want a nice pretty uh, finish, you're going to have to scrape at 45 degrees. But remember, we're roughing. We don't care. So here we go. It's a lot easier to scrape off of a feature like that than it is to scrape onto it. So you can just work one side from this direction and then flip the part 180 degrees and work the other side. But I don't think we'll have to do that here.
There we go. That's a workout. Okay, time for rub. So you can see, we're just gradually working in on this low spot. So, make another pass the other way and see where we end up. Okay. Another rub. Okay, so you can see now we're starting to get color on the whole surface, or you know, some color around the whole surface. So what I'm going to do now is kind of switch patterns a little bit, and we're going to keep roughing, but we're just going to hit the high spots. We're not going to do these big regions. So it's kind of like finish. We'll call it semi-finishing. Okay, I did one more of those sort of semi-roughing passes, and this is where we've come. It's looking pretty good. The only little spot I've got is right here, where I'm a little concerned that the points aren't as dense. But I'm still getting some color in there, so I'm going to do another maybe one or two of those semi-roughing passes, and then we'll be ready to do some finishing. So I've done three of those sort of semi-finishing passes, and this is the result. I'm going to call this the end of the roughing. So the reason I know that it's ready to go to finishing is that the distribution is consistent and it's covering the entire surface consistently. So it's time to time to switch gears into uh, finish scraping. And that's one of the biggest things I see as far as like posts on Practical Machinist or, or v other videos on YouTube is that people don't People don't get to this point before they switch to the finished scraping. They start chasing the, the points or the 
the blue or the black marks before before the part is really ready and you'll get there but it'll take a long time it's much faster much more efficient if you can get the roughing done first so here we go I switched to my shorter scraper it's got the uh, the smaller radius on the on the end and we're gonna go into finish scraping and this is the way that I do it I don't know if it's the right way but it's the way I do it so what I do is short strokes like this across the part and I'm trying to space them and I'm not being very consistent right now but the idea is to space them basically one mark apart and if you come to a place where there is no black spot you just skip that one so and like see here there's a spot where there's there's no color so I'll just skip that one and I like to lift out on the end of the stroke so now we're gonna that's our individual scrape marks now we're gonna do individual lines so we're gonna leave a space between the finish passes so Okay, that's it. Go take a rub. Okay, so now we just do the same thing the other way. So this is after two, well basically one finish pass each direction and I got a little too much black on my plate um, but it's starting to come in. Uh, the reason I can tell there's too much black, you can see these little little streak marks and that usually indicates that you put too much too much of the layout black on one one surface or the other but it's okay I can still can still scrape with it just the way it is. So I'm gonna make another set of passes and see see if it comes in So you can see now it's starting to starting to look more like a scraped surface. So I'll go take another rub and then uh, we'll probably finish it up in the morning. This is the the result after I think six passes now doing the finished scraping. And yeah, we're getting a pretty good distribution of, of the points, but still got some big kind of big spots. So I'm gonna take my small handheld scraper and try to break those up a little bit. Okay, so I did, did a fine finish pass uh, and went ahead and did it both directions. So I'm going to clean this up and take another rub, see where we're at. Alright, I think we're going to call that good enough. Uh, we're well within the 20, 25 points per square inch range. And uh, yeah, definitely good enough for a Chinese angle plate. So I'll just clean this off real quick and you can see what the, what the finished product looks like. OK, 
Okay, that's it. Calling it done.